Hey folks, Derek Kilmer here. I have had the honor of joining you all in person for previous swearing-in ceremonies, and it's always a favorite event for me. Um, now, while this year may look a little different, I am thankful to be joining you all virtually to send my best wishes on your swearing-in. First off, thank you for choosing our neck of the woods as a place to serve. I am a big fan of AmeriCorps. I've had AmeriCorps alums on my team. I really like the pledge that they've shared with me that all of you take, especially these parts. I will get things done for America. I will bring Americans together to strengthen our communities. Faced with conflict, I will seek common ground. Honestly, I think members of Congress ought to take that pledge too. Because I'll tell you what, you haven't seen enough teamwork come out of our nation's capital. And there sure isn't enough of getting things done. But you and the teams you manage do the good kind of fighting, the kind of fighting we should all do more of, fighting for people. Your teams have been fighting on the front line of this pandemic, fighting hunger, providing educational support, giving a helping hand to our seniors. Your teams fought back against mold after flooding in Grace Harbor. Your teams have fought wildfires. And since 2014, the teams you manage have spent more than 65,000 hours responding to fires in Washington state. You fight for veterans and through VetCorps help recently separated service members get new skills that allow them to continue serving our community. You know, some of the best days I've had in this job are the days when I get to see the great work of Amer AmeriCorps members on the ground in the district I represent. Days like when I got to visit the local chapter of Youth Build, which helps 3,000 students nationwide each year earn AmeriCorps education awards for their service building affordable housing. Or when I visited Stewart Middle School in Tacoma and I saw the team you have mentoring the students there. I was so impressed. And those are just two examples of what's happening all over the country and has happened in the 25 years since AmeriCorps was founded. More than a million participants have logged more than 1.4 billion hours getting things done for our country. So listen, I'm a member of the House Appropriations Committee and I want you to know I'm logging hours standing up for your budget because AmeriCorps is worth every penny. For every dollar Congress invests in the program, your labor alone saves $2.20 of government spending. For every dollar invested in national service, the Aspen Institute estimates society gets a return of almost $4 in terms of higher earnings, more economic output, and community-wide gains. That's huge. You know, listen, I've heard people say government ought to run more like a business. I think any business has saved double the amount of what they put in over the long run and tripled or quadrupled their initial investment would be figuring out how to expand this program. And that's a direct credit to every single one of you who is a program manager or support staff, program leader, and know that I'll keep fighting for you because in addition to that immediate return on investment, AmeriCorps is a great long-term investment because you're working to make our economy stronger for the long haul. The skills that AmeriCorps members learn are exactly what American workers need to compete in a changing economy. And in challenging times, when people doubt whether Americans can compete economically and where more than half of our country feels insecure about the future, I'm gonna point people to your members because you guys are resilient. AmeriCorps alums are 27% more likely to find a job after being out of work than a non-participant. So you're making our communities better, you're making our economy stronger, you're making our workforce more resistant to the big changes that we're seeing that's fueling a lot of the division that I mentioned in Congress. It's time like these, I think it makes sense to consider what President Kennedy said when he first announced the idea of the Peace Corps, which was President Clinton's inspiration for AmeriCorps. President Kennedy first posed the idea of the Peace Corps at a 2 a.m. speech at the University of Michigan. He got in late after a day of campaigning and found 10,000 students had stayed up to greet him. He said in what he called the longest short speech of his life, um, which is what some of you may be calling this video. President Kennedy asked the students how many of them are willing to live a life of public service. He said, on your willingness to do that, not merely to serve one year or two years in the service, but on your willingness to contribute part of your life in service to the country, I think will depend the answer of whether a free society can compete. He said, I think it can, and I think Americans are willing to contribute. There are new questions about whether or not we can compete with the rest of the world but all of you are proof that we can. So I wanna thank you for that. Before I close, I just wanna say thank you for one more thing too. I wanna to end with this. You know, the only thing I remember from my college anthropology class was something that they asked Margaret Mead. They asked her, when you're doing research, studying an ancient culture, how do you know you've come across a civilized society rather than just random wanderers? What made them civilized? Was it a tool or an instrument or an article of clothing? 
And she said, you know you've come across a civilized society when you find, find a healed femur bone, a thigh bone. Because as she explained it, in ancient times, if you broke your femur, you were pretty well cooked. You couldn't hunt or gather or flee from danger. And most importantly, you couldn't fix it on your own. You had to have someone care enough about you to help you heal. My friends, we have a lot of broken femurs in our world right now. And it's all of you who've indicated that we have the humanity and civility to keep doing the work to heal them. And I'm just so grateful for that. So thank you. You are proof that we're going to keep doing big things for as long as people like you are doing the good kind of fighting. So thank you and keep up the fight.